Good morning. Uh, we have got some eggs. So let me see if I can um, find them. We've got about so yeah, perfect. See the yellow there? That is one clutch of fine looking PSF eggs, which is really good. Um, and then on the other cardboards, we've got, I think we counted six. This one of them, I think maybe. Not on this one. Not on there. No, not showing you on the track. I think well, maybe it was this one. Sure it was this one. Three. On the edges. Let's see. Not on this one, but we definitely have some eggs being laid, which is great. Oh yeah, there's one. You can see that gap there, right where I'm putting it. Um, there's some eggs in there. The camera's not liking this, is it? That goes in out, in and out of focus, but it's pretty good. Uh, we've got flies. It's quite early still, so it's not up to temperature where we are here. Yeah, it's at 19 degrees when it gets hotter. Nice to humidity, which is good. Uh, and then when it gets hotter, they will come up. Uh, look in here, see if I can't see any flies in there. Eventually, these pupa will come out. It's funny, we looked through yesterday, we, I think we looked through, we had found one day we harvested 48 grams of eggs, which is 46 grams, which is a huge amount. And um, and the reason why is basically we had one day we had loads pre pupa but it was if you synchronize the dates, that's when they'd hatched out. So, um, so yeah, not bad. It's gorgeous, but we still want more flies. This is not enough flies for me. I want like thousands and thousands in here. This is bay A, this is our original bay. We had 20 grams of eggs in this one and there were 10 in each. Um, and every morning she comes and she sort of flies inside and then there's pre pupa. But the th crazy thing is, this has been now six, eight, six weeks, eight weeks almost, for, and they're still emerging. Um, and if you look at the life cycle that we've got hung up here, you can see. Uh, this is the issue, right? Larval stage 10 to 52 days, but all of 30, there's two different models. There's this one and then this one. This one says 13 to 18. And I think some of this is to do with, we didn't feed very well at the beginning, it wasn't great. And so some of them have taken a long time to go through the cycle. Um, and really we want a much, much neater, feed them really well, treat, conditions are great, and then they emerge over time. Um, but yeah, so this is part of, Siobhan's duties every morning is to collect the fly, she puts them in the polytunnel, and then the the pupa. You can see some of them wriggling around. Um, so currently we're just going to leave this here. We will eventually bag this up and sell it, uh, but for now we don't need to worry too much about that. Um, yeah, this is from uh, one 250. of 250 grams of yes. pupa. Yes. Maybe 200 because we've got like some sawdust in here, yes. but that's just from one of those bays at the end um, So it's pretty pretty good. I mean the, this is the frass bay and then the other one's full of frass and we've just We were gonna bag it up, but seeing as we don't need the space right this moment We're gonna leave them in here just to get as many pupa and flies out and then over time as our production becomes better We'll get more consistently all coming out at once um, But yeah, it's just, just a huge amount the ones that we did yesterday, I put, in, I put in yesterday, and you can see already, I've just turned them and they're just, I mean they're all wriggling, they're all escaping so you can't see them, but there's just so many, and they're so much bigger, like it's amazing, 24 hours, and they are, almost, I would say doubled in size, um, it's not bad, there's probably over 150 kilos worth of substrate in here, doesn't look like much, um, but it's... It's a good amount, and that's not enough to support all these. This one is going to take a lot of, sorry, a bit of plastic. Um, going to take a lot of uh, substrate, I think. It's a little collection of plastic. But then it's part of the problem, you know, this is all 
stuff that's wasted and it's not going to be it's all rotten. It's not very good quality for anything else, but it, we can certainly make a good use of it here. The Shiban's recording the uh, weight here of the eggs, but we've just used our pocket calculator. We've weighed the um, cardboards, so and then we cut out the bit where the eggs were, um, and then we recorded the new weight here, so it's my awful writing, 6.73 grams, so that's the cardboard of our eggs. Put that back into the polytunnel, and when it comes out, we know the difference is the weight of the eggs. So here, as an example, we've cut the pieces out. Let's see if I can get the eggs in view. Yeah, see there. Can you see just where my thumb is? At the end of my thumb, there's some eggs there. Let me get another piece so you can see. Um, There we go, this is a good one. Bring it out to the sunlight. You can see there are some, some eggs, some black soldier fly eggs. Uh, so the plan is, what we've done is we've mixed some chopped up veg, veg from, our, from our machine with some maize. That's nice and sort of damp underneath and we put the cardboard on top and then they will hatch out from, from there in four days. There's some nice eggs, that's a nice view of them. Um, and then once they've hatched out, they can go straight into the substrate below. And we've put here the date, so it's the, seven, the 12th today. We expect four, um, four, four days, that's on the 16th of this month, we should start to see maggots. So we'll put this in up Paulson's house up there where it's, uh, it's nice and, it's not too hot, not too cold, it's not too dry, not too wet. We'll put this in there, we'll cover it so it's nice and dark. And then uh, four days time we should have some maggots and then once they're in there we can put them directly into a bay. So that's the plan. We'll see if it works uh, in terms of hatching because that's the bit that we're trying to optimise and get, get, re get work really well. This is the uh, inlet for Pond Dillon which is going to be our... Oh, the sign's falling down, I'm going to fix that. Um, where we're going to put our hatchery. So we've just started fertilising it, you can see. Uh, this is some fertilizer, just being the water's very low, so we need to increase the volume of flow. But basically, after three or four days of fertilization, you can add to your fish. So, this is um, a bit muddy, but you can see some dry patches as well. But they fixed the pipe because it, so this is where the disaster happened where they took the pipe out overnight, and they twisted it just slightly just to allow some of the water to escape so we could catch the fingerlings and then they broke it down there and so we ended up losing half the fingerling which was more than half which was just nightmare stuff um, but you know we're pressing forward mistakes happen uh, can you do so we, I think we're making the best out of a bad situation so we've got one trial one to two but you know, one's okay and we're just going to wait for this to fill then we will get the males and females, we'll put them in this pond, well they'll create back little nests because that's what the males do. Let's try and see if I can see a, an old nest because I don't know if we, there might have been some left over from previously when we had fish in here, bigger fish. Anyway they make nests, there's lots of sort of sandy sort of soil you can see over here, it's perfect for them. And then once they make the nests, they can start laying their eggs. Now here, this looks like a in sort of shallow depression. Doesn't look like much, but that would have been a nest at some point. And once we get the nests, after sort of about two, three weeks, you'll get the fry. You can see them at the surfaces. Then we drain the water, collect. You can see like the water flows down. Collect the brood stocks of the male and female adults. Put them back into their ponds. Leave them for a months to six weeks to recuperate. Meanwhile, we collect the fry, stick it in that IBC tank over there with water. Then we allow the water to flow back in and we put those fingerlings, those fry, into happers within this, within this um, pond. Um, and then we can uh, grow them out basically and then use those fingerlings. We'll probably, the first lot of fingerlings, we'll probably leave as they are and we'll use those. We'll, we want male and females, we need females to replace 
that generation eventually. Um, we'll use those ourselves, but eventually we would then hormone treat the males, which sounds a bit grim for people that don't know about that type of thing, but fish are actually very plastic genetically, uh, sorry, phenotypically. So what that means is they can, you know, clownfish can change sex, right? They can become male, females, depending on what they need. Um, so fish are very good at changing. Um, so what you do is you stimulate sort of a natural occurring thing and you just put some, you give them feed and you put a bit of testosterone in there and it will, over time, make sure that phenotypically, so how they grow, will be male. And the reason you want male fish when you're harvesting them for production for food is that you get a lot more muscle um, and so they grow quicker. So females will spend a lot of their energy up to about a third of the energy that they're using to produce eggs um, and eggs are you know great if you want male and female fish uh, next generation but if you don't you just want to grow them it's just sort of takes extra feed we basically want males because they grow quicker so yeah so hatchery starting and the next few weeks you'll see that developing and we've had a few full starts like <laughs> many things that we're doing you know, you start and not quite ready, then you come back again. So we're optimizing constantly as we're going. Um, you can see here the, the latrine that's being dug. So I should have a go myself, right? Get in there, do a bit of digging. All right, that's the agenda for today. Paulson, I've just seen this about the malnutrition project with the maggots, uh, just delivering them. But I've just seen this. This is um, sawdust and chicken manure, which is perfect for us, what we want for our BSF. And I think we should, I don't think the hospital wants it. So um, let's try and arrange some transport for this. Maybe we put it into sacks, keep it, store it at my place and I bring it over or we can get a, uh, someone to deliver it. But I think this is exactly what we want. And I know that we pay, is it 2,000, 4,000 per bag? So um, that price, this is better because it has chicken manure in it, chicken droppings. And we can take that for our project. Got my delivery of maggots just in that pot. Um, but I just thought we'd, this is my nutrition project, so I thought you'd like enough, another update. So these are the chicks that hatched um, just before Christmas. So these are now, look at the size of them, they're huge. Um, you haven't seen them in a tiny, but they've been eating this pelleted feed that we bought. That's quite good, good for them. So they're growing really big, much bigger than other chickens. Um, and then in this incubator, we have the two newest uh, chicks. These are only, I think, uh, about a week old. Just lift it up. Here we go. Look how cute these guys are. Um, so this thing that I'm holding, this yellow thing, is basically a, like a hot plate. So underneath it gets hot and it just stimulates what the mother would look like. Um, and then this is the incubator with the eggs and they're just putting a bunch of new eggs in currently. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a bit of training on the maggots, just grow those out and then I'll show them how we do that.